they actually had a very big influence on the Beatles. Who's that now? So it's Father's Day weekend, and we're going to count down the top five TV dads on the Two Hats Top Five. Cool. All you fathers, have a great Father's Day. And and, and all you sons and daughters, go see your dad. You know, yeah. Go see your father. Say hi I'm to gonna, your pops. I'm going to see the Rain Man. You're going to see the Wayne Man. I'm seeing Wayne tomorrow, yeah. So. You know. And don't just text, right, Jeff? It's not enough. No. Give them a call. If you can, make some time see them because they miss you. Go That'd to a be- ball game. Go to a, go to a hey, ball game. Wow. Great father, son, or daughter activity. <clears throat> majors, minors, independent? No, well, majors, probably. Well, they might be in a market that doesn't have majors. Well, then you watch a show on the uh, tube there, a game. But they could go to a minor league game. Yeah, but it's just not the same. Well, don't watch it on the tube. Sit in the driveway at least. Oh, yeah, on a little folding chair. And, uh, yeah, it's not the same. They have, like, $2 beers instead of $16 beers. Yeah, but it's the whole vibe better. isn't, like, yeah, it just feels, you know you're at a minor league game is what I'm saying. It doesn't feel like you're actually at a, a real If I'm at a major league game, I'm too, like, into the game. I'm rooting for the game. I'm watching each pitch, you know, That's each true, swing too. of the bat. And, yeah. like, Dad can go fuck off because I'm watching the game. I don't have time for this old man, you That's know. That's true. you got to focus on your cubbies there. He's yeah. in the bathroom every other inning. I mean, it's. Yeah, he pees a lot. Usually, well, you know, their prostate isn't what it used to be. But uh, yeah, <clears throat> that's tr- actually that's true. Yeah, and that's why you need to see them. Yeah, right. On yeah. account of the prostate, it's shrinking you rapidly. Know. So please see your dads. And if you're not paying attention, I mean, that's why your old man, you know, um, just count his bathroom trips during, like, say, you go to see a movie. Yeah. Okay, a human being should be able to sit through a two-hour movie uh, and not go to the bathroom six times. Yeah. That's that's true. Um, or even once. I usually get up once while I'm drinking that huge soda pop. You leave during the middle of a movie and you uh, go to the bathroom? I do. Usually I get a refill on the popcorn, too, while I'm out. So it's You love that popcorn. Oh, I love popcorn, please. Popped corn. Yeah. Uh, You're calling it popcorn. Yeah, pop... Uh, popped. How do you... Popcorn. <clears throat> no, it's popped. Popped corn. Yeah. Okay, but enough about your feet. Let's talk about... Hey-o! Heyo! Welcome to the show. It's uh, Two Hats Top 5 from Two Hats and a Beard. Sure. This week, Jim, it's the Top 5 TV Dads. Oh! What do you think about that? I'm excited. I love TV. I love sitcoms. Well, let's get right into this thing, Daddy. Jim. Yeah. Number 5, Jim. Who's the number 5 TV dad? Now, I should tell you, <clears throat> most of my choices are from the golden age of sitcoms, the 80s and the 90s, and the golden age of Jim Adams, actually. Uh, little, little Jim Adams watching 50 hours a week. Of television, so it's a little dated. It's not nothing has changed in <laughs> Actually, the last twenty years. I know. I still look forward to terrible TV. Uh, number five, Jack <laughs> Arnold from The Wonder Years. Now yes, listen, yeah. Jack was like a perfect typical dad back from the days when dads were dads. Uh, they weren't your friends; they were like your disciplinarians, your mentors, and uh, they taught you how to be a man's man. You know, it was a tough time for dads back then, Jeff. Generations and generations of tough love dads. Not dealing with their feelings. Then all of a sudden, you know, it's the 60s, and there's people talking about free love, protesting the war, and it was hard to adapt. Um, but he did his best. Loved his daughter, who was a hippie, who was married to David Schwimmer, for God's <laughs> sakes. <laughs> um, but, you know, he still loved her. Um, they didn't understand each other, but, you know, the love was there. He was a good dad. He tried his best. He worked his ass off. Um, <clears throat> Jack Arnold. That Wayne was a real fuck-up, though. <laughs> He is, and I guess um, according to Daniel Stern's Kevin voice at the at the end of the series, um, Jack Arnold died in 1973. Yeah, um, and that little shit Wayne actually took over the furniture business. Yeah, he yeah. probably ran into the ground because he was like such a fuck up, you know. He wasn't bright. No, Wayne Arnold. He was like five four. He was you know tortured his fucking siblings. Um, he was great in Pee Wee Herman though. <laughs> Pee Wee's big adventure. I am ready. Roll. Um, yeah, so Jack Arnold, perfect, you know, 1960s yeah, listen, dad. Jim, Jim, you are off to a terrific start. I ah, appreciate that. Thank you. On the uh, top five TV dads. And let me just say, that actor killed it. He wasn't just like a caricature. He was tremendous. Yeah, he uh, I, fleshed it out. He was deep. Yes, I was terrified of Jack Arnold <laughs> I when I was a kid. I he was, was so shitless. good. Yeah, he was really good. That's great. I'm excited because I was hoping Jack Arnold would make the uh, top five, and he did. He stuck in there at... Number five. This is the Two Hats Top Five. It's the Top Five TV Dads. 
Let's do number four, Jimmy. Number four. Number four. Wow. Glad you asked. Uh, Stephen Keaton from sure. Family Ties. Sure. You really remember him, right? The nice beard, you know, Sha-la-la-la. salt and pepper. <laughs> what do we do, baby? Now, I thought it'd be cool to go from old school, uh-huh. Jack Arnold, don't show your feelings, dad, to a newish school, like sensitive, left leaning dad, which was Stephen Keaton. He's an ex hippie. He runs a public television station, WKS. He has liberal sensibilities. And he's got a very different form of parenting than Jack. Mm. Uh, he's understanding. He likes to talk it out. He's got very strong sperm. He's got four kids spread out over two decades. The son, Alex, obsessed with Ronald Reagan. But unlike Mr. Arnold, Steve the Beard would actually try to like have constructive discussions about politics, life, society. Uh, so he went a very different route. <clears throat> Stephen Keaton. Let me tell you something, Jim. Yeah. Stephen Keaton, mm-hmm. he looked like my third grade music teacher. Oh. So I found him difficult to like as a child. You didn't like your music teacher? Or? No. He had a lazy eye. Oh, and, like, it really? always seemed like he wasn't looking at you. Yeah. But, like, he was, you know? He'd catch you, like, oh, cut it out, carps. You, know? like, and you don't know what hell? I have to look at when you're talking to him. It's so awkward. Yeah. It's so stressful. So weird. But, um, you know, having gone back to watch some Family Ties, you know, sometime, like, 10 years ago. Yeah. I did fall in love with him and the entire Keaton family. The whole clan. Wow, nice. Um, yeah. Interesting fact about that show. Michael J. Fox was Alex P. Keaton. Right. <clears throat> also, not, what's that? It's not interesting at all. <laughs> uh, Steven. Everybody knows that, Jim. Uh, Steven is a super easygoing guy. He rolls with the punch as well, kind of like you. Uh, he's got a lot in his plate. His son's a super conservative. His daughter is a bit of an airhead. And his neighbor is a stalker who creeps on his daughter and just walks in uninvited <laughs> like some kind of sexual assaulting nice guy. <laughs> Chippy? Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Something's wrong with that dude. Uh, he's a, yeah. He's obsessed. Yeah, it's but he doesn't. Scary. He's going to murder Mallory, unfortunately. Yes, yes. I think that happens in like 89, 90. But anyways, um, <laughs> and his daughter is in love with a garbage sculptor who looks like Brutus the Barber Beefcake, and he can barely form sentences. And through all of this, he keeps his cool, and he uh, keeps the ship uh, afloat. So uh, keeps it on. Stephen Keaton. He's a good guy. Yeah, he um, takes it on his stride. I don't know that I'd put him ahead of Jack Arnold of the Wonder Years, but Stephen Keaton of Family Ties, hard to argue against, and he comes in at number four on the Two Hats Top Five. He's a good guy. Great beard. Terrific beard. Now, Jim. What's up? Talk to me. we got number three coming up here. Oh, yeah, number three. I know. Yeah. You want to get right into it? I mean, what are we yeah, doing? Yeah, uh, before we get to number three, Jeff, I'd like to uh, That was a, a smooth second. setup, by the way, wasn't it? Beautiful. <laughs> I'd like to uh, tell a great dad joke, and you can't yell at me. Because it's you know it's a dad themed thing we're doing here, so it's I get to tell Father's my Father's Day. Exactly. Now this is exciting. You ready? Yes. Uh, yes. I was talking to the people. Are you ready? <clears throat> Why did the cowboy get a wiener dog? Why did the cowboy get a wiener dog? He wanted to get a little. <laughs> Damn it! No. Why did the cowboy get a wiener dog? He wanted to get along, little doggy. <laughs> Is uh, this thing on? Jim. <laughs> What's up? Talk to me. Jim. What's up? <laughs> well, we're going to cut out that first. Jim, Jim. This half, Jim. What's up? What happened? He wanted to get along, little doggy. What happened? I blew it. <laughs> but it's not <laughs> that difficult, Jim. No. <laughs> I hate telling, okay, I love jokes. I hate telling them. I'm not good. I'm like the guy who's like, wait, 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 I missed a part, you know? But I love the jokes, and you're not going to tell them. You're a lazy pod, so. Well, don't, don't, no, don't attack I mean, me I mean, because I you wanna, feel like an ass. I don't feel like, well, I do feel like an ass. Well, we're going to cut out the first part, and then we'll just be no, like, I'm not cutting out. No, I'm well, not going to cut yeah, out the first part. Yeah, we got to cut out that first, uh, take two. Use take two. Like, what happened, though? You, you Get along, wa- little doggy. He wanted to get along, and then you, like, stopped and swore at everybody. <laughs> It's not like you messed up the first few words. You just quit on the end of it. You are a jackass. Let me just... Well, you know what I'm saying? In real life, you get like, you know, take twos. I'd be like, all right, you know what, guys? Can I start over? And That's not how we roll here at Two Hats and a Beard, and you know it. That's true. But we'll cut that part out. Well, we'll, we'll fix it in post. I'm not going to fix it in post. We'll fix it in post. Um, now, Jeff, number three. I'm glad you asked. Right, please, God. Jim, number three. <clears throat> the uh, top five TV dads now, here for Father's Day weekend. Number three, Jim. Get along, little doggy. Now, it is my <laughs> understanding that we can occasionally have ties. That happens, right? Family ties. Yes. 
Oh, okay, yeah. See what I did? Yeah, it's That's topical. a joke. Topical. I didn't say family and then stop and go, damn it! Fuck! <laughs> now, <clears throat> it's a tie between some cartoon fathers, Jeff. I have a dachshund. Who you are want, You want to know why? Yeah. Because I wanted to get a long little get a doggy. doggy. <laughs> That's how it's done, everybody. Howdy, partner. That's how it's done. Thank you kindly. Dr. Katz. Now, Dr. Katz, Jeff, you're a huge fan as well as an, I am. Uh, Dr. Katz. Bigger fan, I would say. Well, about the same. Bigger fan. Yeah, we're, about, we're, very, we're both very good fans. Um, besides being hilarious Bigger. and having a psychology practice that caters to comedians, which is just, you know, humorous as hell, uh, and a very hot administrative assistant. It's a genius Laura. show. It's great. Um, yeah. The concept is wonderful, and they pulled it off. It's freaking A lot hilarious. of people didn't like the squiggle vision. I love squiggle vision. But um, I liked it. So, no. fuck you. Yeah, right? So, Dr. Katz. And by the way, Under Armour guy, go fuck yourself. Like, get a life, dude. Yeah, right? Like, who feels the need? You know, last week we took a shot at guys who wear Under Armour hats. And I'm sorry, Jim, but this needs to be addressed. Of course. You know? Yeah. Typically, you know, we I got to stay out of the comment sections. Jim, he lives in there. You know, he's just seeking the pain. I'm, I can't wait, yeah. He's seeking out the hurt. Yeah. Um, Jimmy, you have man boobs. And, oh, of course, yeah? he fired back at this guy who was like, <laughs> I'm 5'9", and I work construction, and I'm I like, don't what? have a pot belly. And the, we were talking about guys who are 5'9", 180, pretty much, right? Right, so it's like, <laughs> it's weird. you're in the comment section. Wouldn't you lie and be like, I'm 6'3", 200, man. Like, what are you talking about? The guy lists his actual height, unless he did lie. He's like 5'4", and he made himself 5'9". Yeah. He probably wears lifts, which I get, but come on, dude. Anyway. Commit to a team! Commit to a team, dude. That's all we're saying. Like, enjoy a club and root for them and, you know, sport their gear. Yeah, you're, you're, you're tubby. Now listen, um, he's a great dad to his son, Ben, who's in his 20s. He's got no job and he lives at home. But he's really supportive and he's like best friends with his son, which is really rare. Yeah, It's Benny. really cool. They have great chemistry, Losh great back Benetosh. and forth. And one of my favorite episodes, I always send it, the clips to Benny, you, Benny. is uh, when Benny. Ben is convinced that his dad is an alcoholic. Oh, my God. Because he drinks like, a glass of wine like a night. So he really cares, and he keeps trying to get him to go to rehab and stuff. That and is it's so just, funny. Yeah, you feel the heart. It's a really cool um Yes. People, really cool please go watch Dr. Katz. Yeah. Please. You uh, like H. John Benjamin. You like your Bob's Burgers. Oh, yeah. You have to watch Dr. Katz. Please. And all kinds of cool comedians, too. Um, Stephen Wright is on a bunch. and It's good. Louis Anderson. So mm-hmm. It's funny. Dom Irera. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dom Irera is the funniest comedian on the show. Oh, yeah. Not, not like as an overall comedian, but yeah. in Dr. Katz, he delivers... Yeah. The best. Yeah, he's well, deadpan, funny. Uh, also tied, <clears throat> Dale Gribble from King of the Hill fame. So Dr. Katz and Dale Gribble now, tied at number three. Now, Dale is a phenomenal father, okay? He's got serious mental issues. He's like addicted yeah. to conspiracy theories. Um, he's an adult exterminator who somehow like lucked into a hot blonde meteorologist. But his son isn't biologically his. And I think deep down he knows that, Jeff, don't you think? I think No, he, must, he doesn't know. He must have an inkling. No, I don't know. He doesn't know. If he doesn't know, he's like fooling himself because he loves his son so much. Now listen, John Redcorn, it's his wife's soulmate, but they stay together for the kid, for Joseph, you know, and um, he loves him more than anything in the world. He's extremely proud of him. He's really supportive. He makes sure he never goes wanting. He works his, you know, 25 hour a week job for him. And um, they have a great relationship. So I love it. He's really proud of his son. Dale Gribble. Dale Gribble. Tied now, for number three. Yeah, that's, I, I, I like it. Okay, I like one, it. Uh, one more tie. You didn't seem to agree with this one when mm-hmm. I said it, but uh, Tom Peters from Tom Goes to the Mayor uh, is the first project on Adult Swim from Tim Heidecker and Eric Wareheim. Mm-hmm. Um, so Tom, his, uh, his wife is awful. She takes him for granted, but he keeps a really positive attitude, and he's just full of ideas to make Jefferson a better place for his kids. His three sons, who actually are his stepsons, and they give him so much shit and they hate him, but... Um, he does everything for them and his wife, and he's a great dad. Tom Peters. Why'd you touch me? I don't think I did. Did I? Because they live in Jefferson? Yeah, Jefferson. Oh, I see. <laughs> um, good town. They have food, shopping. Yeah, he doesn't belong on the list. All right, now, uh, before we get to number two, here's a little PSA. Oh. Go see your old man this weekend. See him Saturday. Yeah. See him Sunday. Do it. He he's misses- old. He's divorced. Yeah. Probably. He's probably very lonely. He sits around drinking all day. You know, a text is not going to cut it. No. It's so one day a year. Go have a beer with the old man. Yeah. I mean, for your Mother's Day, you, like, go all out. You buy flowers and presents. And then right. your Father's Day, you can't even, like, go see your dad. Go see your dad. I got news for you people. You know, your mom's probably more of a drunk than your dad. <laughs> that wine. wine? Jesus sure. Christ. That stuff. Yeah, that adds up. But, um, yeah, see your dad. I'm going to see mine uh, this weekend with my brother. <clears throat> Jeff, are you going to see your father or? 
I don't know. I'm not sure. Okay. Well, um, that's also, not, that's not cool. <laughs> um, I got a lot going on. Yeah, you're a busy guy. Yeah. So, so uh, also, um, our producer, the beard, oh, Dove man. Larson. He's not here, missing his. Was he out? His third straight week here? Yeah, Jesus. Yeah. I mean, his kid's in kindergarten by now, and he's still not back. Uh, but it is his uh, first Father's Day, so happy Father's Day. Enjoy the hell out of it. Dove? Yeah, I... Jeez, I missed the hell out of you, man. Come back. I need you. I'm, I'm a mess without you, okay? Miss you so damn much. I miss being with you. I miss being near you. I missed your laugh. <laughs> I miss your scent. I miss your musk. Um, so come back soon, Dubby. I, it's not the same without you, I guess is what I'm saying. Dub? Uh, Jeff? <laughs> <sighs> I miss you, man. No, uh, Jim, so... Uh, <laughs> Where were we here? What are two we... ads and a beard. Of course it is. You know, Jefferson Carbs, Jim Adams. He's got a healthy musk. I just... Number We're doing the top five TV dads right, celebrate right, right. Father's Day. Right, right, right. And we are moving on, Jim, to number two. Number two, Jim. Number two. I'm glad you asked. Jason Seaver. Dr. Jason Seaver from The Growing Pains. Now, listen. Dr. Seaver is a successful psychiatrist yeah. and a great dad and an outstanding head of hair, hmm. which is what I focus on every time he's on screen because all I have left are pathetic, patchy scraps. Now, listen. He attended Cornell. And he's maybe one of like the last intelligent TV fathers before like all the dads became simple and can't handle their own lives, much less their kids. He was great. He was a great dad. He was empathetic. He was intelligent. He was cool. He was very attractive. He was super chill. Great voice. To respect. Oh, great, great voice. Great voice. I am Alan Dick. Um, I mean, I'm a straight man, Jeff, as you know, but I would let him pound me in a submission. He's one of the, the few because he's just, he's very cool. He's, he's, um, he's a great dad, too. And he handles... Listen, he's got that weasel son of his, Kirk Cameron, mm. Mr. Uh, teen Bop, Teen Idol. But he handles them well. He lets them move into the garage up there, rent-free as far as I can I remember. Um, and uh, <laughs> Plus, he moved his practice home, which is really – not everybody can do that, obviously, in their lives. But he moved his practice home so he can spend more time with his family and, like, kind of keep an eye on his kids. It's pretty cool. Yeah. So, but also, I don't know, man. Number two? No. He's a doing? great – he's, like – no offense to Wayne or, you know, yeah. my dad, Jeff, rest in peace. But um, he is a great dad. I, listen, listen. He's so cool. Listen. He's so chill. Like, he's always in control. Like, you're not like, he's not like, oh, what am I going to do with my kids? He's like, listen. I'm I know, but doing number two. Thing, and I don't I'm, think he's lovable enough to be number two. Also, he's a real life father to Robin Thicke. So that has to, like, take yeah. away some points, don't you think? That guy's a skis, yeah. But no, it doesn't. He's number two. Probably would have been number one, but, um, you know, his kids. Get out of here. There's no way. There's no way on earth. Yeah, here's the thing. He's a great dad, uh, great head of hair. He's I'm not, I'm not a big growing pains guy. He had great sweaters, better than Cosby sweaters. They were, like, thicker and more lush. Um, yeah. Maybe revisit that show because I think you'd like it a lot. Better than Cosby sweaters. Wow. Yeah. Plus, when he wore them, um, he probably didn't rape people. Right. I mean, listen, his son is um, disgusting, and he's really not talented, but here's the thing. There was a character in the show called Boner, okay? <laughs> his name was Boner. Yeah, just right. for that moment, you can just okay. hear the word Boner like six times an episode, so it's worth it. Um, good dad. Um, you said there was a tie for number two? What's that? Because I can't wait to hear the other one, oh, uh, yeah. given how good um, <clears throat> Jason Seaver, Dr. Jason Seaver yeah, from Growing Pain. MD, pal. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so he's in a tie with Tony Danza from Who's the Boss. Now, he wasn't a great dad. He was a terrible baseball player, and he was kind of stupid. He's like an adult. But oh, he man. spawned the hottest girl in the history of sitcoms, Samantha Maselli, uh, played by a taut and nubile Alyssa Milano. Now, listen, um, I had a huge... Down. <laughs> just calm sorry. down a little I'm bit. I'm sorry, but I had a huge crush on her, and she I still do. She's really hot and charmed. I was like, God. She has, like, the flared nostrils and, like, oh, man, perfect. Um, <laughs> nice eyebrows. Calm down, Jim. What does this have to do with Tony Danza? She came out of his penis. He did a really good job. Like, that's hard to do. So that makes him a great dad. Uh, he was accepting of his son. <clears throat> and, um, you know, he, Mona was always like, you know, man crazy and horny. And he, um, he handled the whole thing with like a plum. And, um, 
Number two, Tony Danza. All right, so that's number two. Danza! So, that was bad. That was bad. <laughs> so Wait, no, it's the two hats <laughs> top five. Time. The top five TV dads. Yeah. We had number five, Jack Arnold. We had number four, Stephen Keaton. We had number three, Dr. Katz, Dale Gribble, <clears throat> Tom Peters. <laughs> Number two, we had Dr. Jason <laughs> Seaver and Tony Danza. Yeah, this is fun. You want to hit some honorables, Jim? Some honorable mention. Yeah, real quick. Let's shoot through this. Um, Michael Bluth from Arrested Development. Awesome, funny, cool dad. Good he was the only sane member of the Bluths, um, except for like his son and his niece. Great, supportive dad. And I love Jason Bateman. So yeah, everything good pick. he does is awesome. Good pick. Uh, Morty good Seinfeld, the second Morty Seinfeld. Hilarious. Rest in peace. Genuine. Buddy. Yeah, he was a good enough dad that his son bought him a Cadillac. So, okay, that's telling you something. And he loved his son so much that he was willing to squeeze him into a number one dad t-shirt because of the sentiment and because he loved his son so much. So and that's the nicest thing Jerry ever gave him. You yeah. know, I bought you a Cadillac. <laughs> yeah, uh, you cool guy, great great classes, and uh, great character. Um, now, this one. All right, good honorables. You're, probably, you're going to give me shit about this one. What? He's not really in a sitcom. He's in a movie. What? That's why then he's you an can't, honorable. Then let's just move on with our life. Uh, Eugene Levy. From what? the American Pie series. Um, yeah, great, but that's a... Now, obviously, he's not a sitcom dad, but uh, it's very similar. He's a movie dad, same realm. Um, and he was so understanding of Jim. He even, like, walked in on him fucking an apple pie, and he, like, tried to, like, cover it up from his mom, which is sweet. Um, he tried to teach him, like, uncomfortable sexual terms. He really tried to, like, help his kid out. It's rare. I mean, you know, he was embarrassed, but he went for it. Um, he was honest about his ignorance of uh, pubic hair grooming. Um, and then when his son finally told him, he shaved his pubes and he grew like an inch on his penis. Um, he lost his wife early, but he was always present for his son. And that means something, Jeffrey. And great caterpillar eyebrows, too. Are you done? <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, you can't do this every week, Jeff. Well, you know, it's, uh, he was, that's why he's not in the top five, or else he would have been. But honorable mention. He wouldn't have been in the top five, Jim, because. Eugene Levy. Like, I. I... Jim? Is this the bit that you do? There's no bit. There's no, I don't do Are bits. you doing it to piss me off? No. I, he was a great dad. I just had to give him a shout out. I know, but it's the top five TV dads. It's not that difficult. I've seen American Pie on TV. TBS. Ring a bell. This guy. Number. You know the <laughs> goddamn movie. You know it. <laughs> I know. But you know what? It's our show, so fuck it. Now listen, except for your last honorable, Jim. Oh. Pretty good list, man. It's a pretty good list yeah, of almost, the top five TV dads. Yeah, borderline uh, almost made it. <clears throat> you know. Do you have any uh, interjections here? But, uh, yeah, you shockingly left out a couple, just a couple, guys, that deserve to be mentioned. Maybe. Okay. And here they are, Jim, the top TV dads. Philip Banks, Danny Tanner, Alan Matthews, Martin Crane, Peter Griffin, Frank Costanza, Homer Simpson, Andy Taylor, Frank Gallagher, Jed Clampett, Jerry Smith, Ben Cartwright, Frank Reynolds, Dan Connor, Carl Winslow, Tim the Toolman Taylor, Major Slater, Fred Sanford, Frank Lambert, and Red Foreman. Okay. I get it. Uh, Danny Tanner was a creep. I don't wow. trust him. Or, I wouldn't trust him around my daughters, much less his daughters. Um, wow. Yeah, he was really weird. Too soon, man. No, his character. Uh, Danny Tanner, not the... Too soon. Bob Saget was awesome in real life. He's hilarious. Why was he a creep? He was way too wholesome. He was like too wonderbred. Something was... I want you, Tanner! Well, something's going on you know, underneath the hood there. I don't... Um, what are you talking I, about? He really didn't fit in with uh, Joey and um, Jesse. and He was just a weird dude. His wife died... And he, he, he killed his with, wife. With... <laughs> he stuffed her in his trunk. Come on. What are we playing stupid? That's for? never been a theory. He... No, that, what do you think is going on there? All right. San Francisco. All right, Philip Banks. Yeah, he, um, good dad. He was a little too hot-headed, you know what I mean? Like, okay, so, you know. He was a judge. He had a temper. Yeah. You know. Mr. Arnold from The Wonder Years, Jack Arnold, great dad, and he was definitely, like, intimidating and scary, but he wasn't, like, Blowing his stack all the time, you know, yelling at... First of all, Will Smith is lovable. If you're yelling at Will Smith, something's wrong with you, man. Come on. But he also loved Will Smith. He took him in, you know? Because he... Took at one time in. in Philly, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, Those couple park. of guys, they're up to no good, and... Yeah. They started making trouble in his neighborhood. He got into one little fight, and, you know... His, his mom, mom got, got scared. scared. Yeah. So... He moved with his auntie and uncle to, um... Right. Top five TV uncles that he's got yeah. to one, right? Okay, I'll give you... Yeah, well, him and uh, Uncle Jesse, probably. Okay. Oh, my God. Hey. Who is number one? Yeah, that's um. I I don't know if I can pick right now, Uncle Jesse. Yeah. Or Uncle Phil. Yeah, I mean Joey's cool, but something's going on with that dude too. Cut it out, like. 
Dude, what are you like? The thing is, like, he, yeah, he wanted to be like a, a comedian. But he was brutal. But he wasn't funny. Yeah, you can do Popeye. Yeah, who can't? Good, 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 good. It's pretty good. That wasn't bad, right? Bullwinkle. <laughs> who can't? You know, yeah, right? right? Come on. All right. Um, Alan Matthews? Yeah, what is, uh... What? <laughs> Where's Alan Matthews? It's one of my all-time favorites, Jim. Boy Meets World. Oh, that is your favorite. Yeah, Topanga. So, Nothing wrong with so, that. So, Corey... You know, he marries Topanga. He goes against his parents. He, you know, you got to wait. You're not ready. You're not ready. Oh, yeah. They get hitched. They buy this little crappy studio apartment. Oh, it's romantic. And uh, they turn on the, the, the faucet. It's like this disgusting sludge brown water. Yeah. And he's, ah, oh, Dad, you got to help me, Dad. He would not help him. And that's, you like that. Because he had to show him. Corey, it was such an emotional scene. Corey, they're like crying. He's like, I can't help you. Wow. You need to handle this, you know. Damn. And and in the end, Corey took care of it, and he showed him what it's like, you know, to be a man and to take care of your family and to live with the uh, consequences of the choices that you have made. Now, of course, you know, life or death, he's going to help him out. Uh, okay. It's a great scene. See, I don't agree with that. Okay, so here's what you do with your kids, I think. You, you try your best. You tell them what you do. You give them advice. But at the end of the day, they're going to do what they're going to do. They're going to make their mistakes, and you have to live with it. So he already moved out. He's out. Now try and help him through this. I mean, I'm sure he's already saw the error of his ways. He did help him through it. I'm... That's the thing, Jim. He did. Help did he? Him okay. It. I-, I wonder if he did. But Jim, all right, cool. Martin Crane, Jim. Come on. That, he almost made the list. I love that guy. He um, almost. He should be like number two or three on the list. Yeah, with those two sons. Can you imagine? So Marty unlike Crane. him, and he still loves him. And he, you know, he tries. He tries to help them. He's yeah. got that filthy little chair he sits in all the time. He loves him. Reeks. He never tells him he loves him, but he loves him. You know, he's kind of yeah. he's got a little bit of uh, Jack Arnold there. A little bit, yeah. He should have fumigated that chair, but other than that, um, yeah, he almost made the list. So right. obviously, Peter and Homer, Frank Costanza, obviously is a legend. Andy Taylor deserves to be on the list. You're not a you're not an Andy Griffith guy. No, not at all. He's a great dad. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Frank Gallagher belongs on the list. Yeah. Um, go back to Frank Costanza. I almost put him on because he's so hilarious. And it would just be like for the like the entertainment factor if that was your dad, but um, he's a terrible father. <laughs> Do you remember that old like film, the old family film they had? Where he's yelling, "Well, I mean, oh, watch your candles!" <laughs> like oh, he's like crying. George is crying. I don't know. Of course he's a bad father, but he's a you know he's a top TV dad. I Physical think. Feats I mean, come on, a... Frank Gallagher is about the worst father you could have. Yeah. All yeah. right. Anyway. Who else you got in there? I can't remember. I don't know. Frank oh. Reynolds, Carl Frank Winslow, Reynolds is a Carl terrible. Winslow. Come on. Yeah, he almost made the list, too. Um, but this is another thing, kind of like Danny Tanner. One of his daughters just mysteriously disappeared and was never back on the show. Now, what happened to his daughter? <laughs> they never addressed that. Uh, she left to do porn. No, no, maybe. But, no, um, she did porn ooh. in real life. Okay. But her character got murdered. What do you mean, ooh? She left when she was, like, eight. <laughs> no. She must have been legal, I hope. Jeez. That's a horrible well, story. when she did the porn, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, Tim Taylor, I know you're not a fan. He's a good dad. Oh. Um, Fred Sanford. Listen, these, uh, come on. There's so many. Major yeah. Slater oh. from Saved by the Bell <laughs> literally went along, uh, with, you know, one of their schemes, yeah. you know, to get back at Zach Morris to, to make sure his kid was happy in making his own choice of whether or not he wanted to transfer to Hawaii or stay with his friends. Yeah. That, that is a move, you know. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, probably a really terrible dad, uh, Mr. Belding's brother. I just get the feeling he would like ditch out on his kids. I don't. Yeah, he yeah. probably had a bunch of illegitimate yeah, children. Yeah, all running around the beach. Um, yeah. But uh, okay, that's a great list. Yeah, I feel kind of so silly. Frank Lambert. I need to mention from Step by Step. Yeah, Patrick Duffy. Yeah, Patrick um, Duffy. You have to think about Patrick Duffy. He wears a piece. Well, whether he wears a piece or not, <laughs> he was, on, he dude. really was a great dad in that show. Yeah, he was okay, I guess. Um. Not a huge fan just because he was supposed to be some kind of heartthrob, I guess, 10 years earlier, but he has like a little pot belly and he wears a piece. What, what does that matter to you? What matters to me? To Are you a heartthrob? Heart Are you a hunk or not? If you're not a hunk, you're not a hunk. Accept it. And Red Foreman. <laughs> yeah, Red Foreman was good, I guess. Yeah, that's a good one. You guess. Yeah, I mean, he's not. Put top... Red Foreman on the list. He's top nine. I don't know if he um, didn't quite make the list, unfortunately. Kind of mean. Great in Robocop, though. <laughs> Great in. Uh... Star Trek, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. You want to do number one? Yeah, let's do number one. All right, Jim. What's up? So, it's the two hats, top five 
Top Ooh. five TV dads. And it is time wow. for the number one TV dad. Yeah. Let me get you started. Let's rock. <laughs> yeah. Al Bundy. Al fucking wow. Bundy. Wow. That's a great Al Bundy. And it's not even close. No. No, God. It's like Al Bundy and then there's like tier two. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he had a really tough life. You know, he doesn't off himself, even though any sane person would. I would have killed myself a long time ago. Because he loves his family, and he loves his kids deep down. Sure, he rips on them incessantly, you know. He pretends to be disappointed in their progress in life, but deep down, he's a really caring dad. Uh, he's real. He keeps it real. He's probably like the first anti-hero dad. Except for maybe like Archie Bunker. Um, Can I just... Yeah. Let me let me just here. Let me just. And if this is, you know, if you're, if you're you know, getting to this, just stop me. But um, it's not enough to just to say, you know, he... He cares about his kids. His kids are like, you know, total fuck ups. His daughter's a whore. <laughs> She's all right. Christmas Grandmaster B is like a little pervert. <laughs> uh, but Bundy. Yeah, I feel bad. There's an episode that Al goes, they take the car for a car wash uh-huh. before they go up to Winker County. <laughs> yeah. And uh, they lose his car mm-hmm. in the car wash. It's going through the car wash. They lose his car. And, uh, you know, Jefferson's working there. Steve Rhodes comes back in that episode. In that episode? Oh, I don't remember yeah. that. Wow. Yeah, he's, like, all dressed all fancy, and Marcy's there, and Jefferson, she's embarrassed because Jefferson works at the car wash. Yeah. And uh, Rhodes is, like, this high roller, but it turns out he's actually just the driver of this car. You know? Ah, funny. So he's a piece of shit, too. But anyway. Yeah. So in the end, they, they end up finding his car. Uh, the, the confusion, Jim, was that it was a different color from when it went in. <laughs> it was like a red Dodge instead oh, of like a brown smart. Dodge. Yeah, yeah, so that's funny. Um, and he was Al was so concerned about what you know. He had this special thing in his trunk. Yeah. And Peggy was telling him what Biggins? You got Biggins in there? <laughs> it's not Biggins. So he goes to the it's trunk. Yeah. He opens the trunk, and he pulls out a Biggins. And then he opens the Biggins, and he's got his, a family picture in there. Oh, see that. And that's what mattered to him. That hits home. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah, he was a great dad. Um. A lot of people would have, like, okay, he knocked up his wife in high school, but he took responsibility. He put his, like, college football career on hold. He never went back. He probably could have been a pretty good running back. Four touchdowns for Paul Kai. Remember that? Um, and won a game. Yeah, which is pretty sick. Um, me, personally, I would have ducked the hell out of there. I would have just left her with the kid. But he stayed. He's a good dad. Um, like you said, uh, his, Kelly is um, a little promiscuous. But... He must care about her because he beats your shit out of, like, all the boyfriends of hers because he wants to protect her. I'm sorry. You and Rod Belding, you know what I mean? <laughs> Would have just bailed. <laughs> well, it's just easier. You know, she'll, she'll handle it. She'll figure it out. Rod Belding was hilarious Why, because, Rod? like, he had this long hair but was also bald. Yeah. Like uh, Hulk Hogan. I don't know. It's so I know, weird. Right? Like, he's yeah. supposed to be the stud. You want to talk about a heartthrob? Yeah. Patrick Duffy would put him to shame. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, he's found, like, a way around being bald. You know, him and it's Hulk Hogan. so weird. I don't like that. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, boat. Rod. Um, anyways, um, he took his family to Upper Uncton and Lower Uncton. You know what I mean? He took yeah. them on vacation sometimes. Um, yeah, the Unctons. <laughs> well, they want a trip. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, no, nah, he's a great dad. Obviously, number one, he's hilarious. He cares about his family. He's real. He takes a lot of bowel movements. <laughs> and um, he's funny as hell. He's funny as hell. You I love know, what he puts in his new, like, uh, you know, toilet. <laughs> And he's like imagining what a bow whoosh, <laughs> you know the flush. Really, yeah. oh, oh man. man, I love it. I love that show. Yeah, it's a great show. Might be the number one show of all time. The and number uh, one TV dad of all easy. time, Al Bundy from Married with Children. The easiest call you'll ever make. Also, Jeff. Yeah. Talking about sitcoms. Um, stay tuned. Next week we're gonna have a laugh track to kind of let you guys know when to laugh when we're being funny. Try it out. I think it helps a lot. Um. So stick around for that. What is the deal with laugh track? I think because, like, honestly, a lot of these shows, if you ever watch them without a laugh track, like, they had a Big Bang Theory on YouTube without a laugh track, and it's not funny. It's not funny, it's, right. It's, like, weird. So they need the laugh track to let us know when to laugh, when, when they're trying to be funny. Now, what sitcoms don't have a laugh track? Ooh, that's a tough... Uh, Larry Sanders show on HBO. Great show. No laugh track. Um, well, Dream On, I guess. Uh, what else? There must be other ones. I don't know. I'm asking you. Oh, you're asking me. You, got, you came up with... Well, Kirby Enthusiasm. <laughs> stuff like that. Like, you don't... Yeah. If it's really a good show, you don't need to get cues for the See, audience. I don't consider those sitcoms. Okay. What sitcom wouldn't have a laugh yeah. track? Well, listen. Um, I'm sure there have been... Like, It's Always Sunny. Is that a sitcom? 
I think so. It's a situation comedy. Right. Um, it's 20, 20 minutes with commercials. Yeah, I think that is. And there's no laugh track. No laugh track. Yeah. There you go. So Frank Reynolds maybe should have been on the list. Well, he's in the honorables. That's true. Okay. You want to just hang out for a while, or what do you want to... I want to watch some Tool. Ah, yeah, dude. Let's Dr. put on Katz. some uh, Dr. Katz here. Dom Irera. Yeah. Well, this was fun. This is probably my favorite one. You think? Yeah, so far. It's only the third one. It feels off. I don't know. Something oh. feels off with the show, and it's... Hey, in the uh, comments, let us know if uh, we're off. It's the beard, you know? I miss his musk, yeah. I know. He's not here, and it's... I usually get this aroma coming from the producer table there, and I know yeah. that he's... It's farts. He's there. That he's there. For it's me. farts. He toots occasionally. Listen, he's a... Occasionally, he farts all, <laughs> like, the entire hour. Yeah, in the middle of a show, actually. He rips one. Um, he'll, he'll walk by on, like, his fucking marijuana break in between segments, <laughs> and he'll be like, oh, I'm sorry, guys. Yeah, right? Oh, I'm sorry about that. I it's don't like, miss why? that. Yeah, the are sulfur you, smell. Why are you dusting crops behind <laughs> us? I know, he's not sorry. Don't say you're sorry if you're not sorry. Right. You're trying to make us smell your farts. It's ridiculous. Dude. And he's got a big ass, so, like, he walks into the bookshelf <laughs> with his big ass. Shit's flying around. You know, knocking yeah. over all my precious uh, okay. collectibles here. Yeah. You, you know, know what, Dove? Yeah, take another week, man, because... Don't yeah, don't, no, take your yeah. time, though. Yeah, I mean, no we hurry. just want, uh, you know, everybody to be, you know, happy and healthy and... Uh, it's fresh air. I like the fresh air down here. Um, I'm kind of getting used to not the... Not smelling like farts. Uh, Jeff? It's a hell of an ending. Yeah, you reek, dude. So, the two hats. Top five. The top five TV dads. This is it. Number five, Jack Arnold, The Wonder Years. Yeah. Number four, Stephen Keaton, Family Ties. Yeah, sensitive. Chippy. Number three, Dr. Katz, Dale Gribble, and Tom Peters. Great dad. Number wow. two, Dr. Jason hey. Seaver, Growing Me. Pains, and Tony Danza Pains from Who's the Boss. And the number one TV dad, Al Bundy, uh, married with children. What a dad, huh? This has been Two Hats and a Beard. We're coming back next week. Yeah. Maybe with the beard, maybe not with the beard. We'll have a top five. He might have a full program. I hope so. I don't know. Yeah, we'll find out. Suspenseful. For Jimmy Adams, I'm Jefferson Carps. This is Two Hats and a Beard. Have a good trip! Have a good trip. Thank you. <laughs> Jeff? You okay? <laughs> <laughs>